We're going to look at two curriculum projects, both involving the English department in a school in Tamworth. And they illustrate how success in one pilot curriculum project can encourage development of another project or other projects in other schemes of work and indeed in other subject teaching as well. So the initial project is a GCSE topic looking at non-fiction writing. The second one involves year seven students and speaking and listening. And they both involve entirely different employers. But what you'll hear in the voice of the head of English and also the careers leader at the school is their description of not just how it happened, but why they felt it was valuable and why it's something they want to continue. I think really, I mean, the whole point of the non-fiction section in the GCSE exam is that they have to create their own viewpoint and perspective on a particular topic. So when we teach this, um, often the exam materials that we get are very, they're quite, you know, they're quite generalised and, and they're not very engaging. And you know, we, we want to really get our students, if they're going to form an opinion on something, and a lot of them have got really good opinions, really valid points that they want to share, really interesting ideas and actually we need to make that more engaging and more real for them so i think this particular incident i mean the the original idea that we had was of interest because it involved their own town but even that to be it, it still was a, a topic that maybe you know housing they, we have, they would have actually done a lot of research around there was a lot of, sort of information that they needed to collate they still were interested because it was a real article that we looked at it involved their town they knew the area so they could actually say oh i've been there i know what that's like and the more real the situation is the more they are um, engaged with it and i think that simply made me think right we need to pick something now and obviously the situation around covid there's so much to talk about i mean we looked at education but you could have i could you could have been much more specific with their own personal experiences it could yeah, there was loads that could be done with it and i was just absolutely blown away with the students responses anyway the fact that they didn't really need any input from us it was just go away and get your ideas down and then and then they produced some fantastic work well, they produced work that was that ended up being published it was a double page spread in the local yeah. paper right, how did how did you feel and how do you think the students felt not just about seeing their work published but seeing that what was being written as what could have been an academic exercise was valued by a real publisher I mean, I actually, uh, uh, it was lovely, I got to meet one of the students um, because we went into school and we did some master classes. So I actually had a face-to-face -face conversation with one of the students that had their work published. And straight away she said, you know, this has absolutely opened my eyes up to journalism as a career. That was, they were her words. She said, I write all the time. I write, she writes a lot of poetry. She writes a lot of some more creative writing. But she said um, that this just opened her eyes to the fact journalism was a career. And we actually spoke about, you know, and she said, oh, I probably would need to go and, and live somewhere, you know, like maybe move to London or Birmingham. And it was just for her as a 15 year old girl to think, right, actually now this opportunity has given me um, much more sort of insight into what I want my future to look like. And that for me was absolutely wonderful because a lot of students at that age, rightly so, don't quite know where they want to go and what they want to do. And they also sometimes don't realise what opportunities are available to them. And um, they feel sometimes a little bit restricted. And we obviously, our job is to completely open their eyes to the fact that they can achieve anything that they want. Um, but this now is almost evidence that because they've got, at the age of 15, a piece of work that has been published um, that was wonderfully written but as you say it was a double page spread in our local newspaper it's a massive massive achievement so they, they really for, for, for all the students even the ones that didn't have their work published even actually those that didn't do a particularly good job will have seen that what might normally be seen as an academic exercise writing non-fiction mm -hmm. is actually something that's valued in the real world. Do you think it motivates all the students or just the ones that have an interest in journalism? No, I think it has. I mean, we've since actually opened this up to our um, current year nines going into year 10 because it became a little, a little bit different, but we were studying a, li a literature text and it was quite difficult over virtual teaching and learning to get them to access the play and really understand some of the concepts within the play. So actually for those that felt that they needed something to kind of evidence their end point, um, I just said, you know, well, we've done this exercise with year 10, it's optional, it wasn't like you had to do it, but 
all of a sudden people want to write about it and whether that was because they've seen the article being published I mean we've obviously put it on our on our media you know we really celebrated the children but I definitely think and I think it will actually give them more confidence because a couple of them actually one of the, the students didn't actually want their work published and I found that a little bit interesting I thought oh yeah it's a shame and maybe now on reflection seeing their peers work sort of being celebrated in such a positive way hopefully those less confident students will be more encouraged as well Marianne I mean you're the careers leader so you're the one that's probably most interested in youngsters who say who, who have been inspired to think about what they might be doing are when they leave school but what's your perspective on this because this is embedded within an existing scheme of work You've, it's the English faculty that have driven this thing yeah, I mean, from a careers leader point of view, I mean, it's been absolutely amazing. Although, obviously, like you say, the English have been fantastic and they've driven this project. Um, I'm extremely proud of how dedicated the teachers, the students and the local employers have been, especially um, delivering it during the pandemic, as you say, with all the difficulties that have been involved in that. Um, but it, the, I can say, um, you know, just from, I've been and speak, spoke to pupils, teachers, had feedback that's come through as well. Um, and it's really clear to see how having a real life, you know, task to do that links with local employers has really infused them, um, engaged them more in wanting to actually take part and have their work produced in a local newspaper is absolutely fantastic. Um, but also, I think it also would help increase their attainment levels as well because if you're engaging students, that's the problem sometimes, isn't it? Half the battle trying to engage them in the work. You'll hear people say sometimes, well, what's the point of doing this? I'll never need this skill. But they can actually see from this project how it is a real life skill that actually you could become a journalism from taking part in this project. As some of our students have suffered with uh, low self-esteem, low self-confidence, it really, really has given them self-confidence, a real sense of achievement. I mean, there's many adults who couldn't get an article produced in the local newspaper, let alone young people aged 15. So it's, it's been remarkable. And it's also, from the work I've been doing, I can see other subject leaders are now seeing what's been done and it's shown them how, how you can do it. And they're actually really interested in doing it as well. People approaching you saying, yes. can we do something similar in our subject area? Yes. I mean, the, interestingly, though, you know, you completed this project and you kind of as a school signed up for this and just a half week focused on this scheme of work. But then you chose of your own volition to do a second one. And uh, that was involving the NHS. And it was a speaking and listening topic. Do you want to say something about why you wanted to do another one? I mean, interestingly, the younger children are great because they have that confidence more so don't they than the older students that have kind of realized that it's not as cool to how things published and things like that but to the younger students we throughout the whole of the virtual learning have really engaged with any kind of topic we've put in front of them but the spoken language unit is so important and I think in students you know, we, we need to make sure that by the time they get to you know the older years that they are confident speakers that, it, that they can form opinions but present opinions in a clear way in a in a way that's sort of sensible and well thought out and we've made sure that in all of our units from year seven right up to year 11 there is some aspect of this spoken word whether that be through drama whether that be through in this case the non-fiction and again they've got opinions they have got things they want to say and we just need to hear that because it's about creating confidence in them but it's also about them you know, being able to develop opinions, form viewpoints. And if we know that that's content way down the line for their GCSE, why not make sure that it's there in year seven, but not in a in a, an exam format. It's there for them just to be able to confidently and quite naturally form views and uh, viewpoints and, and present those. And the topic was about the fad diet and mm -hmm. the expertise was from dietitians, professional dietitians obviously happened was that those youngsters became little experts in the business of nutrition and learning about the role of, of dietitians. So, I mean, there's two things there. One is about the academic mm. benefits. The other is about learning about themselves. Yeah. 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 yeah, and themselves and, and almost educating themselves in the process. And it's things like that that we really need to now be, be putting into our units of work, things that are have a wider purpose. And we talk about cultural capital all the time, about them building on themselves as people not just you know, as, as you say the academic side of things they're passionate about it and it actually again opens up a, a student in year eight you know wants to be a doctor 
and already he is asking me for resources he wants to, me to get into the library and it's, we need to be just absolutely encouraging that as much as possible and i love the fact that they got to research obviously the medical side side of things but then they were actually quoting you know lots of different people even celebrities going along that route as well to really kind of um build on their own arguments that's one thing at gcse linking it to the curriculum again that you have to do you have to obviously build on ideas but be able to quote other people to support support your opinions with facts and they were able to do that really really well and the facts came from an expert so yes. very perhaps we can ask you that last question because you know we just heard there is an, at least one student saying they want to be a doctor there always is there's always a youngster who says i want to be a doctor but presumably there may now be youngsters who say i want to be a dietitian because they found out about the role of a dietitian Presumably you're interested in things that widen their horizons and get them more aware of the opportunities that do exist rather than having a narrow perspective on the future. Definitely, because I think obviously the curriculum in the past has, you know, you, you dip into things, but you don't, you don't really cover um, these careers. And in terms of like a dietitian and year seven, they were really enthused and engaged by this task. I mean, my daughter was in year seven and she actually did it herself as well. And I got to see the project. It's beneficial in, in many ways in terms of like you say, it educates them in um, a number of different careers that they may never even heard of or knew what existed. I think it's also helped in terms of like fad diets. I mean, it was a really good subject to learn about and it helps with their, you know, not only education as well, but well-being and mental health as well by learning about these things. I think the more we can do these sort of things and the more we can promote different careers and across the different subject areas, you know, the more educated the children are going to be and the more, you know, the higher their aspirations they'll have when they when they actually leave our academy.